Today we'll look at drawing Newman projections, as well as identifying the most stable conformer and the least stable conformer. This is our example here. We have 4-ethyl, 2-methyl hexane. The parent chain has already been numbered here. And we're asked to draw a Newman projection through the carbon-3, carbon-4 bond. So this is what we're asked to look through. So we can imagine this is our eye, and we're looking through this bond. And first, we're going to draw a random Newman projection just to go through the process. And then we'll look at identifying the most stable and the least stable conformer. And remember, it's a conformer because this is the same molecule, but any single bond on this molecule can rotate. So this bond here is being rotated, and it has different 3D arrangements in space, which is why we can have a more stable version and a least stable version, depending on how it's being twisted. And remember that if we had a double bond or a triple bond, we cannot do this. We cannot, the molecule cannot be rotating. Before we draw a Newman projection, we have to identify the front carbon and we have to identify the back carbon because the way we draw Newman projections is we have a front carbon that's drawn like this and then we have a back carbon that's drawn like this. And then combining the two pieces will give us a Newman projection that looks like this. So once again, this represents the front and this represents the back. So if we look at our molecule, we're looking at it through the carbon-3, carbon-4 bond, which means that this carbon here is the front carbon. So we can make a note that the front is carbon-3. And the other carbon, carbon-4, number four, is going to be the back. So on our molecule here, this is going to be the back, carbon-4. number four. We then identify the pieces that are attached to each carbon. So on carbon number three, we have this group here. This is an isopropyl group. It can be identified, or it could be written as CH, CH3, 2. And then we have two implied hydrogens. So those are our three pieces, and we can just go ahead and fill, fill those in. We have a hydrogen, a hydrogen, and this group CH, CH3, 2. And those are the three pieces. Now looking at the back carbon, carbon number four, we have this ethyl group, we have another ethyl group, and then we have an implied hydrogen as well. The ethyl groups can be abbreviated CH2, CH3. So we have CH2, CH3, and a hydrogen, and this is how we identify the groups attached to those carbons. So now all we have to do is put the pieces together. The front has a hydrogen, a hydrogen, a CH, CH3, 2 group. The back carbon has a hydrogen, and then two ethyl groups, CH2, CH3, CH2, CH3. So once again, the blue came from the back carbon, carbon number four, and the green came from the front carbon, carbon number three. So we just drew a random Newman projection. This is how it looks like. And now we can go ahead and discuss how to identify the most stable and the least stable Newman projection, or you can also say conformer. So when it comes to Newman projections, we have two different factors that affect the stability of the Newman projection. So we have number one and number two. Number one deals with whether the Newman projection is staggered or eclipsed. So this is how it looks staggered. And this is how it's going to look eclipsed. So in the staggered one, the groups are not overlapping. So here we have the front carbon, and then here we have the back carbon. The groups are not overlapping. And if we look at the eclipsed version, 
the blue is the stuff coming off the front carbon and the green is the stuff coming off of the back carbon. So the eclipsed version is supposed to represent a confirmation where the front, the stuff branching off the front carbon is right in front of the stuff branching off of the back carbon. But we obviously have to draw it a little bit, a little bit on the side because we can't draw on top of each other. So this is what the eclipse represents. It, the stuff are directly over each other. And for both of these cases, the one thing we need to remember is that electron clouds repel each other. So if we keep this in mind, then which one is more stable, the staggered or the eclipsed version? Well, the staggered is more stable. And the eclipsed version is less stable. And that is because if we look at the staggered version, we see this interaction here. The green is not, is not as close to the blue as it is in the eclipsed version. In the eclipsed version, the two electron clouds are much closer to each other, so they're repelling each other much more, making the molecule less stable. So this is the less stable conformation. So this is factor number one. This is the difference between having a staggered conformation and an eclipsed conformation. But the other factor deals with how far away are the big groups from each other. So in one case, we have a anti-relationship. So if I draw a blank staggered Newman projection, and then to the front carbon, I add two hydrogens and a methyl group. And then for the back carbon, we also have two hydrogens and a methyl group, which I will draw in green. Then we can say that these two groups, the two biggest groups, which is this methyl and this methyl, they are 180 degrees away from each other. Therefore, it, they are said to have a anti-interaction. Similarly, if I draw another blank Newman projection and I do the same thing, I add two hydrogens and a methyl group to the front, front carbon in blue and two hydrogens and a methyl group to the back carbon in green, then we can see that there is a difference here. In this case, the two biggest groups, which are these two methyls, are not 180 degrees apart from each other. Instead, they are 60 degrees apart from each other. This interaction is called gauche, and it has a different stability than the anti-version on the left side. So which one is more stable? Well, if we consider our rule in red, electron clouds repel each other, then we want these biggest groups, these two methyl groups, to be as far apart away from each other as possible so that their electron clouds cannot interact with each other. So in that case, the anti is going to be more stable and the gauche is going to be the less stable version. But once again, all this can be summarized by the fact that electron clouds repel each other. So we want the groups, we want the biggest groups to be as far apart from each other, to be as stable as possible, and we also want the conformation to be staggered rather than eclipsed. And also we have a special name if something is eclipsed. So on this side with the number one, if we have a conformer that is eclipsed, it's said to have torsional strain. And on the other hand, if we have something that has a gauche interaction, that is said to display a steric interaction or steric strain. So now we can go ahead and go back to our example. Here we drew a random Newman projection. And now we want to identify the most and the least stable conformer. To do this, I will draw a few blank Newman projections. On the top, we have some staggered conformers. And on the bottom, we have some eclipsed conformers. So usually when we try to look at all the possibilities, we keep the stuff attached to the front carbon the same. We don't rotate it. 
but we take the back carbon and the stuff attached to it and we rotate it. So the front is always going to stay the same. So I'll fill that in on all the models in green. The most stable conformer is going to be staggered. So one of these three, once we fill them in with the different option, is going to be the most stable. And then one of the eclipsed ones is going to be the least stable. So now we fill in each of these Newman projections with a different possibility of how the back carbon can be aligned. Because remember, we're rotating about the carbon-3, carbon-4 bond. So I'll go ahead and mark the back ones in blue. You can always start randomly, so you can put an H, a CH2, CH3, CH2, CH3. So you can just put the back ones on randomly and then start rotating. So when you rotate, you're going to put this one down here. You're going to take this one, move it up here, and you're going to take this one and move it here. Have a hydrogen there, CH2, CH3, the ethyl group, CH2, CH3, the ethyl, other ethyl group. And then we do the same thing. We make a rotation. Now the hydrogen in the back is down here. And then our two ethyl groups are on the top. Okay, so we already discussed that the staggered conformer is always going to be the more stable version compared to the eclipsed because the groups are further apart. But now we have three options and we have to pick which of these three options is the most stable. So now we have to consider, if we go back, we have to consider the steric strain. So we have to look at this piece here and decide where the biggest groups are compared to each other. So if we look at the first staggered, we have an interaction here between a isopropyl group in green and a ethyl group in blue. This is the one of the gauche interactions and this is something we don't want. Looking at the second one, we also have this interaction between a ethyl and an isopropyl, they're gauche to each other. Once again, we don't want that. And then in the third one, we also have an ethyl and we have a isopropyl that are gauche to one another. And we also don't want that. But this third one looks like they're further away, but in reality, it's just the way that it's drawn. They're still at the same angle away from each other, 60 degrees. So, so far, they're all looking the same as far as this interaction. So the thing we have to look at next is where the other big group is. So in the first one, we have one here. This one is 60 degrees away from the isopropyl group. Then we have this. In the second one, we have the group here. And this is 180 degrees away from this isopropyl group in green. The isopropyl group is the biggest group. It has three carbons, so we need to pay attention to that. And then finally, on the third one, we have the ethyl group here for the, on the back carbon, and it is also 180 degrees away from this large isopropyl group in green. So if we look at the first one, the first one, we have the ethyl group that is gauche to this large isopropyl group. So this one is not going to be the most stable. Because the other two, remember, we said that it was 180 degrees away. And if you're wondering how to measure the degrees here, basically in the staggered version, every, every distance from one line to the other represents 60 degrees. So we have 60 degrees plus 60 degrees plus 60 degrees. This group here is 180 degrees away from that isopropyl, but it is 120 degrees away from the other ethyl group in blue on the back carbon. This is for the second confirmation here. If we look at the third one, it is also 180 degrees away from the isopropyl group and also one, um, 120 degrees away from the other ethyl group. 
So basically what this is saying is that structure two and structure three are actually the same. So either of those would work and either of those would count as the most stable. Similarly, for the eclipsed conformers, we can go ahead and on the first one in blue, just randomly list the three stuff branching off the back carbon, which is a hydrogen and two ethyl groups. And then from there, we'll just rotate and rotate to get all the possibilities. So here is the first conformer with the stuff branching off the back carbon randomly put as hydrogen, ethyl, ethyl. And then from here, we're going to rotate this way. We get this confirmation. I moved them all down a bit to have more space. But basically, we have our hydrogen up here now on the back carbon, ethyl group here, ethyl group here. And then we'll do this one more time. And now we have the hydrogen here and the two ethyl groups here and here. And once again, the eclipsed is going to be less, always less stable than the staggered version. So what we're trying to find here is we're trying to find which one is the least stable. So we know that it's one of the eclipsed versions. So now we have to decide which one. So in the first one, there is a interaction between this isopropyl and this ethyl. And then we have the other ethyl being 60 degrees away from one ethyl. Moving on to structure number two, we have the same interaction, isopropyl and ethyl. And now we have the ethyl also being 60 degrees from the green isopropyl is just on the other side. And then moving on to the third structure, we actually have none of these interactions. We have this ethyl and this hydrogen. We have a isopropyl in the hydrogen and we have another ethyl in the hydrogen. So actually this third one is the most stable out of the three eclipsed, but we want to find which one is the least stable. But as we just found out, this structure and this structure are actually the same thing. It's just the ethyl is um, on the bottom instead of on the top. 